is a video response for psych hundred. So let's, to so let's say you're given that the initial power was on fifty percent, and I want to know what happens when you quadruple the sample size. Can you use that nice trick we did before? Because if you're examining the standard error, in fact, this is a good point to make. Let's look at the old standard error, which would have been what? It would have been sigma over the square root of n, right? Let's look what happens when you quadruple the sample size. Well, you can already tell me this new standard error is going to be sigma over n times 4, right? Just like the problem we did before. And let's rewrite this. So isn't that sigma over the square root of n, but then the square root of 4 is 2. So there's a 2 here, right? And if I clean this up one more time, does everybody agree that's basically a half? times sigma over square root of n. Why am I being anal like this? Because I want to really point out, this was the old standard error. Okay? This is the new standard error, but the new standard error is, is the old standard error. It's just half of that. So really what I'm saying is the new standard error is 1 half sigma over square root of n. The sigma over square root of n was the old guy. So I'm going to put this in the error hole. Okay? So you can see, the new standard error is 1 half of the old one. Okay, pretty straightforward. By the way, well, we can make a prediction on the power thing, and I can do it with common sense too. The bigger the sample size you get, the more accurate you are, the better the power should be. So the power should definitely go up. Okay? But let's see what we can do. Okay. So starting off with this fact, again, it's not as nice because it wasn't perfectly one, but a factor of a half does not mean the power changes by half, and it certainly doesn't do something weird like double, because that would be 100%. Okay, so there's no cheap way out of this. We have to do it for real. Okay, so let's see what this thing says. So first, these numbers I'm going to pick are going to be arbitrary. The, the actual numbers, I just want to make it concrete so you can see the idea. Then I'll summarize it at the end. Okay, so pretend like that your hypothesis was 100. Okay? And then, here's your crit value. Right? For an alpha, oh, let me give us an alpha. Let's say the alpha is 0.05. If the alpha, alpha is a 0.05, and let's assume it was a two-tailed test, then the z crit would be 1.96. Okay. By the way, I have a tendency of saying T. For this example, everything should be Z. Okay. So this is Z crit, and it's 1.96. Okay. This is not a score. This is a Z value. So this is Z crit. This is an actual score. Okay. But remember how the power works. So you've already rejected. So you must be at least here or maybe up here somewhere, right? And if you look at the curve that results. Since the power is 50%, that means to the right of this line, right, or to the right of this line, you have 50% of the curve, okay? But I guess that means it looks like this, right? Because your sample, so let's take your sample, pick a number. Let's pretend like it's 200. So again, these made up numbers won't matter, I'm just illustrating. If this had been your sample, you would have used it as the mean for your new population, right? And if you do that, and it's right on the critical mark, you can see to the right of that critical mark is 50% of the curve. So this corresponds to the power of 50%. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Not too bad, right? Okay. So we have this going for us. Okay. Oh, yeah. We just finished part two. Now go click on part three.